Hey everyone, I'm Ian Douglas, the author of the website techinterview.guide. I do live streams every Sunday and Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern about topics relevant to interview preparation for the tech industry. I occasionally record longer Q&A sessions and I've started to break those into smaller videos to post. And there'll be information at the end of this video about how to get in contact with me if you have additional questions. Let's get to it. Uh, last one on my list. I didn't think I was going to get through all of these, but uh, chat was a little quiet tonight. So um, the last one on the list, what are some, what are the best ways to identify top talent in your field? Um, so there's a handful of things that I would look for in top talent. Um, depending on the company and depending on what it is we're trying to do and what we're trying to build, in roles, uh, so with, at the employer that I'm at right now, in the past, so I, I worked for them before I went to Turing for four years and I went back to that employer, which is why you always want to leave on good terms because you always want the ability to go back to a job if possible. Um, if you liked it there and they liked you, uh, you always want the uh, the ability to go back. The, the kind of employees that we were hiring back in the day, like four plus years ago, were people that did a lot of technical writing uh, around subject areas that showed they were an expert on something. Um, and so it was kind of a developer relations kind of role where they were really good at sharing information with other people, uh, positioning themselves as a thought leader or as a technical leader in some kind of area. Um, but mostly that they were just willing to share their knowledge um, and willing to work on open source projects and things like that. Um, now that I'm back in the role, I'm not really doing developer relations um, and I'm focusing more on the education side. But when we, when I kind of look through the job postings that we have and the kinds of people that we're looking for, um, you know, we're still certainly looking for lead engineers. We're still certainly looking for people that have, you know, a couple of years of experience or experience leading a team or, um, you know, full stack kind of experience, but that are also willing to lead a team. Who, and by leading a team, you don't necessarily have to know everything that the team knows, but you do have the opportunity to um, to kind of learn from one person and then share that with someone else. And you're kind of the liaison for other people on the team of like, how can we share all of this knowledge around all of us so that we all get better at what we do? And I think that that's an important trait um, at any job is how how can you share your knowledge? And so when I would look for someone in a role, like if I were hiring for my team, I would be looking for people who are very eager to share what they know and not just hoard that knowledge and keep it to themselves. I've worked with people like that. I've worked with people that, are, that have had that mentality of if I'm the only person that knows this thing, then I'm indispensable. Um, and that, that is the case for a little while, but eventually you're going to be dispensable. Like the company is going to want to get rid of you because you're not willing to share that knowledge. And I think that it's a dangerous thing to sort of hoard that knowledge and be the only keeper of that knowledge because literally what happens if you get into an accident um, or something happens and, you know, your internet goes out and now the company's in a bad spot, bad position because you're offline. We can't reach you to get some answer to something. Um, that puts the company in a really bad position and you have then become what we call a single point of failure. And we don't want a single point of failure, whether it's a hardware system, a software system, or an employee. So I would say within a company, um, being able to share that knowledge is, is probably one of the top things I would look for. And that's kind of the catchphrase of this whole channel. It's like, share what you know, and we all win. I think that it's important to share that knowledge. That's why I love doing these streams. Hey, thanks for watching. I love helping people out with interview prep and I hope this video helped you in some way. If you found this Q&A useful, please consider subscribing. You can follow me on Twitch as well for the live stream twice a week. Check out techinterview.guide slash streaming for more information. I also have a daily email series that you can subscribe to on the website. There are never any ads and when you finish the series, I scrub your information out of my database permanently. Finally, if you have a question that you'd like answered on the stream, you can find my contact info on techinterview.guide. I prefer LinkedIn or email. If you leave your question in a YouTube comment, it might take me longer to find it, but I'll see you next time.